everybody! Today's practice problem comes from a new textbook that's out on the market. We've got Principles of Microeconomics by Dirk Mateer and Lee Kopic. Today we're going to be covering problem number six in chapter two. The problem begins as follows. Suppose that an amazing new fertilizer doubles the production of potatoes. How would this discovery affect the production possibilities frontier between potatoes and carrots? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to construct a production possibilities frontier between potatoes and carrots. And like we sometimes discuss when we don't know which good should be on the y-axis and which good should be on the x-axis, we say we just sort of make some arbitrary distinction. But the point is that our production possibilities frontier depicts a world, you know, an overly simplified world, but one that's helpful to analyze nonetheless where we only have two goods that we can produce. And the stereotypical goods that were used a long time ago are guns and butter. But here we're going to be looking at potatoes and carrots instead. So we don't know which one is supposed to go on which axis, but we do know that the production possibilities frontier is drawn with one good on one of the axes and the other good on the other axis. So I'm just going to put potatoes here, and I'm going to put carrots You could do it the other way around, just make sure that everything else you're doing in the problem is consistent with what we're doing here, and consistent with the way that you drew your production possibilities frontier. So we typically say, and we don't have any numbers to work with here, so we typically just say, well, production possibility frontiers tends to have a bowed out shape that looks something like this, and I'll just call this PPF1. And sometimes the production possibilities frontier is called a production possibilities curve instead. And this is just representing all the different combinations of potatoes and carrots that a society can make if the society's resources are being used efficiently. So this point up here would represent the point where we're not making any carrots, we're at zero on the carrots axis, and we're using all of our resources to make potatoes. And this point down here is the point where we're not making any potatoes and we're using all of our resources as a society to make carrots. And we generally get this bowed out shape because if we're using our resources efficiently, as we trade from making all potatoes to eventually all carrots, we're switching over those resources from potatoes to carrots that are best at making carrots or worst at making potatoes and so on and so forth. So we tend to get this sort of shape here. Now the question told us that there was a new technology that aided in the production of potatoes, and we were asked to show how that affected our production possibilities frontier. So an easy way to think about this is if we have a new technology that aids in the production of potatoes, if we were to put all of society's resources towards making potatoes, we could make more potatoes than we could before, right? So it must be the case that if we're just considering and comparing the points where we're making only potatoes, that we must have moved up. We must have increased our production of potatoes if that's all we're producing. So there's a point on the production possibilities frontier, the new one, that's gotta be somewhere up here at a point higher than our original production possibilities frontier. We could also think about, just to get some logic to get our head around the matter here, well, if there's this new technology in making potatoes, but our society was only making carrots, we can then ask the question, is the society able to make more carrots than it did before, if that's all that it's doing? And that answer, of course, is no, because we didn't say that there was any spillover from the technology when used to make potatoes to the technology when used to make carrots. So we didn't get any more productive at making carrots, so it must be the case that this same point down here is also on the new production possibilities frontier. So if we were to think about what this looks like, we would get a new production possibilities frontier that looks something like this here. 
let's call this guy PPF2. And this is generally what we see when we have a technological improvement in one of the goods that we're producing. We see that we get a shift away from the origin on the axis of the good that improves in technology, but we don't get any change on the axis of the good that didn't change in its level of technology. The last part of the problem asks, would it now be possible to produce more potatoes and more carrots, or only more potatoes? So we can analyze that just looking at the diagram that we've already drawn. Now, obviously, if this society was making only potatoes, it could make more potatoes than it could before. But we can also note that situations where we're making both more potatoes and more carrots are represented by points that are up and to the right on our production possibilities frontier, or up and to the right on our axes of carrots and potatoes in general, regardless of whether or not they're on these curves. So for example, if I were to show you a point on the old production possibilities frontier here, and a point, somewhat of an arbitrary point, on the new production possibilities frontier here, we can see that it is in fact possible with this technological advance to not only have more potatoes because we moved up on the potatoes axis, but also more carrots because we moved to the right on the carrots axis. And we can see in general the points that are up and to the right on our diagram are points where we're getting more of both of the goods that we're producing. And you could actually do that at a lot of points, you know, a lot of different places. I just sort of chose one arbitrarily. So it's certainly the case that there are a lot of different ways in which the new production possibilities frontier gives us the possibility of more of both goods, even though we had a technological advancement only in one of the goods. And the reason for that, if we just think about it for a second, is if we have a, technolog a technology advancement in making potatoes, we're getting more efficient at making potatoes, meaning that we can either make more potatoes per unit of time spent or per resource spent, or we could make the same number of potatoes as we did before with fewer resources than we did before. And what that latter point essentially means is that we can lower the amount of resources we put towards making potatoes a little bit and maybe still have more potatoes coming out, but then we can take those resources that we took away from making potatoes and use them to make more carrots. And that's really the mechanics of how we would get more of both goods.